All right, welcome, Matt. So this one is is any. It's kind of what it sounds like. It's a predicate type. It takes in a T and it will return true or false if the T is any. And that may seem like a different uh, sort of problem than we've been doing, but it's actually a pretty it's a pretty like intellectually challenging one because you can't just say like the the trivial thing. Here's all the tests we have: any, undefined, unknown, never, and string. You might be t tempted to say like T extends any you know, true, false, but we'll see very quickly that this passes like none of the, like uh, only one of the four tests. Plus it's test number one, give it some credit. You yeah, know? yeah, like okay. it's, a fifth, it's a fifth way there. <laughs> so, so Matt, what, what do you think? Like, how would you, uh, how would you approach something like this? Well, this is tough because, so is any, so our cases are, we have any, we have undefined, we have unknown, we have never, and we have string. So the issue here is that T extends any. What we're doing here is we're checking whether T is assignable to any. And this is an issue because any is assignable to anything. So like, if you imagine like, this is similar to if we just had a function here where we had func and we had like, uh, T is any, we can pass anything to this function. And like uh, anyone who's done a little bit of TypeScript will know this, you know, like anything is assignable to this. Mm -hmm. What I'm thinking like, okay, so I don't know how to solve this. Like uh, this is, this is, uh, I actually didn't prepare for no, this call no, 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 yeah. whatsoever. And like, I am completely like in the dark here. So okay, this so is what I would try. Yeah. I would try, first of all, there's a technique where we want to be able to check if any is assignable to this. So I could say any extends T, except we have the same kind of problem in reverse, right? Which is we have like any is assignable to anything. So I'm really intrigued by what, you're thinking here because I guess we could check if it has like any value or like I yeah guess, yeah so yeah where, where's your I'll tell, you, I'll tell you how I solved it by, by myself mm. I'm uh I'm happy to say that usually I cannot even come close to solving these challenges and I just go straight to f solving them but sometimes I'm feeling like I can solve it and the solution mm. I found I only found two other people who did it so here's my thought process here's what I did so the first thing we want to do is take out never so to do that we use the like uh distributing mm. busting uh technique here we put the and this is the is never challenge if anybody's interested in this we have a whole challenge where like this is basically all we do um so this will this will kind of filter out never so we should we should see that the never case where is it here oh uh if it extends, oh, sorry, oops, if it extends never, false, rather. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the is never case is passing now. That's great, so we handled that. And then I was thinking, you know what would be kind of cool? Uh, key of never, or sorry, key of any is a special thing that is string, it's like property key, it's like string or Boolean or number. So mm -hmm. if we do that on any other type other than never, we're gonna get something else. So we could say key of uh, of any extends key of T. Mm -hmm. And then here, uh, did I do that right? Key of any uh, true? Oh, sorry. This is okay. Let me just paste it. Uh, this was my so anyway, here it is. This is the the thing that I came up with and this passes. Mm. Uh, so the first part filters out never, and the second part checks uh, uses like it sort of abuses key of. Um, wow. So just to ask a question here, then yeah. let's look at type uh, any keys mm -hmm. equals uh, key of any. Let's yep. investigate this. So if we hover over this, then we can actually like. Uh, sorry, if you stop typing for a second, sorry, just sorry, so I can get the hover. Uh, then we get string or number or symbol. Yes. That's interesting. So why then extends, but then this is going to be basically key of any extends. Okay, let's let's add a, another piece here, which is we go something like six and uh, we say is any and we stick in an object here. So a string. Is this going to pass? No. Huh, okay, that's interesting. Because, because keys of this, this thing is just A. Okay, how about if we go for a record where we go property key string? Oh, oh you, huh. oh, okay. I got you. All right, you got me there. I got you. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, like, because I'm struggling, I mean, I'm struggling how to solve this myself. Like, I've, I've no idea where we would actually get to this. 
So there is a there is a more there is a more uh, let's keep your case here. There is a more canonical solution. I will mention key of never is a fun one. You can also do uh, key of unknown uh, is never. So that means that key mm. of uh, key of key of unknown is <laughs> key of un- anyway. Uh, sometimes I Gross. get I like laugh too hard to myself about these kinds of things. So here is a case that I bet will pass the one you just made. It does. Um, oops, why is there an equal sign there? Oh, did I wait? What did I copy? The wrong thing. Okay, he is it just this yeah, one. Yeah, here? Sorry. Wow, there you go. Okay, so here's what this is doing so any intersected with one, uh, so what that means is, uh, is basically something that can't exist, like the only thing that can intersect with any and get out any is any. Nothing else can intersect yeah. with with one and get out any. So any is kind of like like multiplying multiplying by one. Like anything multiplied by one is itself. Maybe that's a bad example, but you could put any number in here. I wouldn't. It wouldn't yeah. matter. And same thing here. You could put any number there. Uh, okay. Any any number that doesn't start with zero. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what this is saying is, uh, it's a it's abusing the fact. Or I mean, abusing is a strong word, but it's taking advantage of the fact that if you intersect anything with any, you get out any, and any is the only property or the only TypeScript value that has that oh, feature. So we yeah. can we can leverage that in order to get something that is pretty like I'd say this one is pretty bulletproof. Yeah. Um, let's see. There's and if then, so let me just check a couple of things then. Please. So we can obviously do this with strings. We can say Matt and uh, MITS or something, um, <laughs> then that's going to work. If we do this, then it's not going to work. So it has to be a different, different literal. Type. Yes. Um, right. Because then, so this is, because what happens if you do extends this and this? Of course, then this is the same as uh, this and any, which yes. we saw before. So it has to be a different literal. But then surely this is like, it's just the same, or because if you get mitts and this, then this just resolves to any. Uh, well, yeah. L- let's make a type. Yeah, I like how you think. I do the same thing. So, to those watching, uh, this approach that Matt's like naturally using is really a great r- thing to do on a day to day basis, and it's the reason why if you're used to doing the challenges, this format is a little foreign. But I split them all up into their separate cases so we can hover over them and see like what does it actually return at any particular point. So. Yeah, uh, whatever and any, exactly. It it reduces down to any. Um, but I, I'm I'm super confused there because if you put any in this slot, which is what you're saying, well, this is reducing down to. Yeah, then it's, it's the uh, only thing that will work. reduce to any. So it's the only thing that will return true. But if you come up here and re- and and let's say we passed in, uh, you know, I don't know, string. Okay. So ah, got you, got you, got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah what this reduces to is MITS, or let's put in never here. Uh, yep. What this reduces now is never. Wow. That's so neat. That's so cool. Isn't it something? Um, oh, and wow. I should have I should have put this in sooner. So uh, there's a couple people on, did I, oh, I hope I wrote down who wrote this. I didn't, man. Okay, I'm trying really hard to get better about when people write things on the challenges. So you can pause your screen. We kind of just went through all of this. Um, I should have pushed, mm-hmm. put it on the screen, but basically this is explaining, this person was explaining how this actually functions. Um, and he is intentionally unsound and acts as both a super type and subtype of almost every other type. Almost meaning not mm-hmm. never. Do I say that here? Um, yeah. So that's why we have to do the never check up here in order to get this to work because never has a little bit special behavior. Okay. Believe it or not, there's a couple other completely different solutions. Um, wow. Uh, this one is, uh, this one, it's, it's, it's just the gift that keeps on giving this, this type. So here's one. It also passes the, the, the one that you made. Mm. So this is taking advantage of, uh, the way that function types are a little bit different. Um, you can also, here's an alternative of the above. These are just, it's an error just because they're the same name, but mm. um, these are functionally equivalent in this case. And so what we're, we're taking advantage of the contravariance of function arguments. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure how much I could <laughs> say beyond that. Uh, it's just a weird <laughs> fact of TypeScript that this is, this is a place where you can, uh, 
be more specific. In fact, the equals mm. type that's very often used in, uh, if we jump over here to this file, uh, this is the kind of canonical, believe it or not, typical way that people do is equals checks in TypeScript is using this exact solution, using this exact fact. Um, so yeah, because the way that functions are compared together is is pretty interesting, and pretty arcane, and I know very little about it. Yeah, and I know that kind of too. what you're doing here is you're basically checking things at a higher level. It's kind of like mm -hmm. using these angle brackets, but at one level up. Um, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, these. Uh, and it just I I'm I'm unsure of how to wield this myself. So I'm very impressed that someone can compose this stuff together. Same here. Uh, so <laughs> if anyone wants to correct in the comments, sometimes uh, I don't feel like I have to ex know everything when I do these because uh, people chime in in the comments and I genuinely appreciate that because usually someone has a great explanation. So here For is sure. yet another one. We only have uh, kind of two more varieties of solutions. Uh, this, is, this is another interesting way to solve it. So someone put... Uh, Again, remember that we've talked about this in previous challenges. Matt, you weren't here for it, but uh, this thing here that I have selected, the the it looks like an empty object, it doesn't mm. really mean empty object in TypeScript. Um, it means like, uh, well, it, it means like non-nullish thing. And mm. this, I'll read this real quick, uh, kind of briefly, but what this person is doing is setting up a tuple and comparing both sides of the tuple. You could do this with a nested uh, conditional, but it's sometimes convenient to just prep, just uh -huh. make a tuple. So they're seeing if if uh, the first check is does empty does the non nullish thing extend t, and the second check is does t extend null. That's to remove wow. null because non nullish. So the only thing so, that will satisfy both of those cases is any. So to react to this live, then this is so cool. I've never seen a conditional type expressed this way because what it's basically doing is is it's saying, okay, we have a tuple here and it's kind of like a weighing scales, right? It's like checking for absolute equality. Mm -hmm. We're checking that this is assignable to this, which means that we're checking that this is assignable to this and this is assignable to this. Mm -hmm. So they're using the tuple kind of like an and. That's incredible. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I have. Uh, man, I'm so excited to, to hear that. Uh, so last night I was solving some challenges with you know Theo uh, Theo yeah Theo Brown. Um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go to one that is completely unrelated to what we're talking about here. Um, but there's this challenge Zip, and it has a really beautiful solution. So Zip is like uh, really quick. We're we're falling off the ladder here, but Zip is like taking two arrays and sticking them together. So like this input this output has one and true, and then two and false, so the first items and the second items go together. Um, don't worry mm -hmm. about this solution that was just left on the screen. Here is one of the solutions to zip. So it's doing exactly that same thing. Instead of usually right. to solve this, you do a nested you do a nested loop, right? And you can solve it this way. Yeah. So for example, uh, here's a very typical solution that you see. You first iterate through the T's, you first then you iterate through the U's, and then you like do some work. But you mm -hmm. can skip that nested iteration by wrapping T and U in an array or in a tuple first, and then you can even infer from inside of the inside of those tuples. Mm -hmm. This is two levels, and we're inferring four different things all at once, and then we just plop them together here. So beautiful. Isn't that wow. something? Um, so yeah, exactly same concept going on here. And then, uh, oh man, and I didn't read through all of this, but I think we kind of hit it. If uh, I'll, I mean, pause your screen now if you want to see this. I formatted it so it'll fit on the screen, um, but we'll keep, we'll keep moving because there's uh, so much more for us to see and talk about. So this one is the last... Uh, oh, second to last. Okay, but the, the last two here are basically the same sort of variety. So this one is interesting. Uh, it's basically doing the same work that we were doing before, but it's ma it's like mapping this construct to a Boolean, so it's using a helper type. Um, this is rewritten uh, by th this... Uh, let me format it. It's rewritten this way as well. Very similar sort of solution. This just kind of... Uh, alternations of the same thing and they're saying does does boolean which is true or false extend and then we have this thing going on here the only time the only thing that can both extend never and not extend never is uh any and then so it will be true or false and what is what is true this will reduce down only in the case of any uh 
it will reduce down to this. Every other type so in TypeScript. So if I, if I can get a word in edgeways here, Please, we've sorry. got this yeah, yeah. Boolean extends, T extends never. And so this check in the middle here, if T is any, then it will end up being true or false. So I didn't know that it distributed like that, I it guess. Yeah. So I didn't know that it checks both sides of it. And then because we're doing it with Boolean extends, which we could replace with true or false, then, sorry, here we go. Um, then what we've got is true or false extends this and that works. That's amazing. God, it's, it's so crazy that you're like, taking advantage of all of these little features that are not documented in TypeScript at all. Like there's no spec for TypeScript. There's no way that yeah. this behavior is described. <laughs> so you're just going off like really basic knowledge and really fundamental knowledge. Wow. Well, uh, Matt, I'm really glad that I, I I knew that if I picked this one to do with you, you would have uh, you would be excited as I am about it. Uh, this is a really cool challenge. Not necessarily like the most rigorous challenge in terms of practical ability, but in terms of theoretical knowledge, like this one really, really goes to the end of the earth. So For that's sure. it. Wow. <laughs>